the first day of February. It's February. It is Black History Month. President Biden made an official proclamation declaring it Black History Month. Republicans in the House of Representatives counted, uh, countered by declaring it March. But um, <laughs> the first month of the new year is behind us. Dry January is over. And I tell you what, February's here, and nobody was more surprised by this development than our nation's easily astonished casters of news. First day of February, can you believe it? First day of February, can you believe it? First day of February, can you believe it? Can you believe it is February 1st? Can you believe it's February 1st? Can you believe February 1st? February 1st, can you believe it? 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 February 1st, can you believe that? February, can you believe that? February, can you believe it? Can you believe it's February 1st? It's February 1st. Just like that. Can you believe it's February 1st? Mm -mm. It's unbelievable. It is. It's, I know. It's so, it's so weird. It's like, you think about it, it's like yesterday it was January and now it's just a whole different month. I can't wrap my head around it. And with the shock of January ending came another massive jolt. This morning, after 21 seasons, Dr. Phil has decided to hang up his mustache. I know, I'm, I'm sadder than a hound dog getting whizzed on by a fire hydrant, too. I really am. <laughs> Dr. Phil will be missed. I mean, without Dr. Phil, who will stay on top of important subjects like my daughter believes she's pregnant with Jesus? What will the ultrasound show? Baby bad boy Blake with abs of steel. Can Dr. Phil break through his cold heart? Our hula hooping superstar daughter has Stockholm syndrome from her narcissist DJ boyfriend. And my mom is delusional and believes she is Annie from Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal. It's been quite a run over the past two decades. Uh, the good doctor filled us with uh, memories no amount of psychotherapy will ever allow us to forget. Are you delusional? Do, are, do you suffer from a mental illness? I strongly oppose that view. You're a virgin, right? Yes. You've never been on a date. You don't have a job. You just put on a paper dog suit and walk around town which doesn't seem to me to be a highly productive course in life. My mom's a sociopathic piece of Let's see your talent, you ugly piece of Okay, stop. Hey, hey, look at me. Let's look see at your me. talent. No, hey, hey, hey. No, you need to look at me. I don't have to do And all these hoes laughing like so funny. So the audience are a bunch of hoes. Yeah. Catch me outside, how about that? Catch you outside? Go. You're out of here. That is not fair. You lied. 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 Does he become Mr. Phil? I don't know. <laughs> All I know is we salute you, Dr. Phil. No one on television has welcomed more mental patients into their studio. And I wish you and your wife, Dr. Phyllis, some well-deserved rest. <laughs> Maybe go to Cabo with the lady who's pregnant with Jesus, you know? <laughs> Not only is Dr. Phil hanging it up, Tom Brady today announced he's decided to retire. But for real this time, this is every year on the 1st of February, Tom Brady comes out of the locker room. <laughs> to announce his retirement, and then if he sees his shadow, he goes right back to the NFL. <laughs> I have, a, I have a, a radical idea, I think. They're both tired of what they're doing. Maybe Dr. Phil and Tom Brady switch places. Dr. Phil plays quarterback for the Buccaneers. <laughs> Tom Brady yells at the cash me outside girl. It's, uh, but the Buccaneers have other plans. Now that Tom Brady's out, they've been searching, and uh, congratulations are in order for the new quarterback for Tampa Bay, uh, Heisman Trophy winner, George. <laughs> Santos is the, will be on the center for the Bucks. He's already in the NFL Hall of Fame, so why not? George Santos has been having another doozy of a week. Yesterday, we learned that his longtime campaign treasurer has resigned. She sent her resignation via email. She said she could no longer fulfill her duties as she had to return to Nigeria to reclaim her share of a $40 million inheritance. <laughs> A week ago, the Santos campaign said they were replacing her with a guy named Thomas Datweiler, who's a, apparently a known and respected campaign finance consultant. They filed paperwork with his name on it, but Datweiler says, I, he, I told Santos I wasn't interested in the job, and I never agreed to take the job. Turns out the offices of Representative Santos aren't the well-oiled machine we maybe thought they were. <laughs> 
But we're also getting a lot of details about Santos's past from ex-boyfriends. ABC News interviewed one of his exes who said Santos bragged about dating supermodels and even claimed the, those supermodels begged him to become a supermodel. <laughs> they, they begged, please, George, become the Costco optical department's first supermodel. No, I, I must serve the people. But this, um, this guy, his former flame, said George Santos promised to get him a green card if, quote, he married him and stayed under his wings, which wasn't a metaphor. George also told him he was a pterodactyl. <laughs> Remember that football player, Manti Teo, who was catfished by a guy who was a guy then who claimed to be a woman named Lene Kikua? Well, George Santos is Lene Kikua, and Manti Teo is everyone in the third congressional district of New York. <laughs> Another con man news, Donald Trump is trying to rev up the MAGA outrage machine with a heaping helping of trans paranoia. I will sign a new executive order instructing every federal agency to cease all programs that promote the concept of sex and gender transition at any age. I will ask Congress to pass a bill establishing that the only genders recognized by the United States government are male and female, and they are assigned at birth. By me, your commander in chief, <laughs> an official penis inspector of the United States of America. He will be coming around and he's gonna, you know, He'll be grabbing everybody by the genitals, because when you're a celebrity, they let you. No serious country should be telling its children that they were born with the wrong gender, a concept that was never heard of in all of human history. Nobody's ever heard of this, what's happening today. It was all when the radical left invented it just a few years ago. Under my leadership, this madness will end. And an all new madness will begin. <laughs> Under Donald Trump's rule, the only genders will be Burger Kings and Dairy Queens. And I like that the guy who busted in the Miss USA locker room is all of a sudden very concerned about who uses what bathroom. But it does make sense. He's an old fashioned person. He doesn't believe men should get breast implants and become, and no surgeon gave him these C cups. He earned those <laughs> magazangas all by himself. One McNugget at a time. In Delaware today, the FBI searched the vacation home of President Biden uh, looking for any remaining classified documents. Biden's attorneys found documents at his main house in Delaware last month, and the president has a, reg a regular house and a vacation house, both in Delaware. I don't know, how's that a vacation? <laughs> Can you vacation from Delaware to Delaware? I don't they didn't find anything classified, but they did find uh, 1982 Zenith TV and three boxes of Parcheesi. And <laughs> And a dodo bird. Did you hear the dodo bird is coming back? There's this company, it's a genetic engineering company. They're called Colossal Biosciences. They raised $150 million and they plan to use it to de-extinct the dodo bird. Which and I don't mean to be insensitive to dodo love. If ever there was an animal that was weeded out by natural selection, it's the dodo bird. They couldn't fly. They were so dumb and fat, sailors could literally just scoop them off the ground like pumpkins and boil them for dinner. They were the Donald Trump of birds. <laughs> and every, I don't know if you've seen the illustrations, but every drawing of every dodo bird, it looks like they just found out they went extinct. <laughs> I don't know why they're doing this. If you're gonna spend $150 million, bring back something we miss, like Betty White. I mean, right? <laughs> Take that $150 million. De-extinct the Golden Girls. But if they do manage to resurrect the Dodo Bird, I have a feeling that this is how it's gonna wind up. The Dodo Bird is back, and Popeyes is serving them up just how you like it. Stop by today for our Popeyes Dodo Double Deal. Our original Dodo sandwich, Dodo nuggets, fries, and a drink, all for five bucks. But hurry, cause this deal will soon be going the way of the Dodo. Love that Dodo from Popeyes. I would... I would try it, I would, I would. Speaking of dodos, Mike Lindell, if you didn't see our show last night, Mike Lindell, the My Pillow Man, was our guest. He, uh, I interviewed him while he was squeezed inside of an arcade claw machine. It was as if like Zoltar from Big came to life to spread conspiracy theories about an election. Good one, Jimbo. Real good. What is that? Who is there? Well, it's me. It's me, Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. 
I'm over here at Davy Brewster's. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're still at Dave and Buster's? It's been 24 hours. Has it? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Well, you know what they say. It's a uh, time flies when you're slowly suffocating. <laughs> Hold on. Do you mean to tell me you spent the whole night in there? Well, I've been in here since yesterday, soaking in my own juices. One of your producer gals was supposed to let me out, but she must have got distracted by the lady pack woman machine, because she never came back. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I hollered at Brenda, the waitress, to let me free, but she couldn't, on account of it was time for Dylan's eighth birthday party, which was a horror show. Oh, no, why? What happened? The kids! Oh. Dirty little boogers surrounded me! They did? They surrounded you? Yep, they did. I kept yelling at Dylan to go get his stepdad because the little vermins, he was using the claw to pinch my wanger real hard. Oh, my gosh. That sounds, that sounds terrible. Is that why you're bleeding? Bleeding? Who's bleeding? You oh. are. Oh, oh, this, it's, uh, that's, that's for come I tried to gnaw off my own arm so I could wriggle down through the prize hole. Oh, okay, now, Mike, don't gnaw off your body parts. That's no good. Well, that's what Cooper said. Who's Cooper? Cooper's the assistant manager who taught me that gravy blusters ain't just a restaurant with a skee-ball machine. It's a family with a skee-ball machine. Uh-huh. And families take care of each other. Oh, well, that's very sweet. Before that's... he left for the night, Cooper crammed me in a half-eaten rack of Korean sticky ribs. They're still good. There's some meat on it. OK, well, okay. wait, Cooper gave you half-eaten ribs and left you in a cage? Heck yes, they treat me real good in here. Brenda taught me that marrying ketchups together is OK by Jesus, because condiments can't be gay. Well, that's <laughs> fascinating. I did not know that. Plus, I learned that not all the machines is doing bad things like stealing elections and clamping down on your peanut wiener. Oh. They got one over there. You put strawberries in it, and it spits out daiquiris. I'm never leaving, Jim. OK, Joe. wait. So are you telling me you live at Dave & Buster's now? Why not? I made lots of new friends. This here is this one I call Leroy Winklebottom. <laughs> Say hello to Mr. Crimble, Leroy. Hi. Hello! <laughs> yeah, really. This one here is Hoppy Gilmore. Uh -huh. It's like the golf ball movie. Yeah. You get it? But he's a frog. Yeah, so yeah, I hoppy. get it. Yeah, yeah, right. And yeah. then we got this cute little guy right here. I call him Mr. Stinky. Why do you call him Mr. Stinky? Because he's been stuck underneath my butt since yesterday. Oh, okay. okay. Uh -huh. That's Dylan. Get out of here, kid. I told you that. You get out of here, you stinky punk. Oh, hey, <laughs> you give that back. You give that back. The little demon's running away with Mr. Stinky. Okay, Hand no, him over, or but, I'll skin you like a muskrat. Wait, you can get out of the machine anytime you want? I can, and I can get out anytime, Jimmy, but I don't want to. This is my safe space. Stinky needs his meds or he'll die. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you, Mike. We will pray for Mr. Stinky, and, and good luck getting out of that. <laughs> all right, that was uh, Mike Lindell. He's still in there. I wonder how many nights in a row we could get away with that. <laughs> Next time, we're going to put him in the whack-a-mole game. <laughs> <laughs>